Hmm. How fast can you read? First of all, I wonder how fast can you run? How fast can you swim? How fast can you walk? How fast can you skate? How fast can you ride a bicycle? How fast can you drive? Um, I'd like you to um, use numbers to think about how fast you're doing things. Uh, speed. As you hopefully know, um, speed is distance divided by time. Um, and I'd just like to point um, out a difference between English and Japanese. Often the differences between Japanese are about order. So um, this is Japanese. And this is English. OK, did you notice the difference? They look the same now. Uh, I'll just show you again. Um, this is Japanese. And this is English. Uh, so you can see they look the same now, uh, but the order that we say them is different. And in Japanese, we start from the whole and go down to the small part. Whereas in English, we start from the small part and then go to the whole. So when we're talking about speed in English, um, because speed is distance divided by time, uh, we talk about, for example, 50 meters in however many seconds. So distance first, then time. Or we may give a number in meters per second or in kilometers per hour. Um, so please think about your speed. So um, how fast can you run? How many meters? How many seconds? How fast can you swim? Uh, how fast can you walk? How fast can you skate? How fast can you ride a bicycle? Um, how fast can you drive? Think about these in, in terms of numbers. Can you put a number uh, in English, of course, and um, a distance? per time. Um, while you're thinking about these, how fast, what I really want to know is how fast can you read? Uh, someone was asking this question last week. It's a very good question. It's a very important question. So how do we measure reading speed? Well, I guess we can say very fast, fast, slow, very slow. Uh, can we measure in kilometers per hour? meters per second? I don't think so. I think we need to measure in words per minute. This is also known as WPM. And to find the number of words per minute, we just need to measure in time and measure in number of words. Um, if you're reading online, then the online software is probably measuring your reading speed and you can go later and look at what your reading speed is. Um, and you may wonder, what does it mean? Is that fast? Is that slow? Is that good? Is that bad? Uh, here are some reading speeds. Um, and for a native speaker, 500 words per minute is very fast. 400 is fast. 200 is slow. 100 words per minute is very slow. Uh, that's for a native speaker. Uh, probably you're not a native speaker. You're a non-native speaker. So what about these speeds for non-native speakers? Um, well, 500 is still fast. 400 is still fast. 200 is still slow. And 100 is still very slow. Whether you're a native speaker or a non-native speaker, it doesn't make any difference. 
Um, 500 is still very fast for anyone, and 100 is very slow for anyone. Um, of course, native speakers are often faster readers than non-native speakers. Uh, the reason for this is that they've had more practice. Of course, some, some native speakers are not fast readers. Some native speakers are very slow readers. Some native speakers can't read. Uh, so if you can read very slowly, you are faster than some native speakers. So this idea of is it a native speaker or non-native speaker is not at all helpful. Um, what is perhaps helpful is to think about learners. Now, if you're learning English, often 180 words per minute is considered a kind of threshold. For example, if you have to take the TOEIC test, you need to you need to read. You need to read the questions, you need to read the passages, and there's a time limit. So to get through the TOEIC and to have a chance of getting a good score, you need to be able to read about 180 words per minute. Otherwise, you can't read all the questions within the time. If you're reading um, a low-level book, if you're reading a relatively low-level book, uh, level one, level two, level three, um, then 150 words per minute is not a bad speed. Um, don't worry if you're reading at that speed. If you're reading 60 words per minute, let me just show you 60 words per minute. That's um, very painful if you're reading at that speed, and um, it's probably not going to help you to read at that speed. What tends to happen if you're reading something that's um, difficult to understand, then because you can't understand it, you can't read quickly. If you can't read quickly, it's not very enjoyable. Uh, if it's not very enjoyable, you don't read much. And if you don't read much, you don't get better. And if you don't get better, you're not going to understand. So this is a vicious cycle. This just gets worse and worse. Um, your reading doesn't get quicker. It doesn't get more enjoyable. It gets less enjoyable. And you give up. What we need, what's very important, is to turn this around and make sure that you understand easily. If you do understand easily, you'll read more quickly. Um, and if you read more quickly... Uh, you will enjoy reading more. Uh, actually, there are two reasons why reading quickly is more enjoyable. Uh, first of all, of course, the story is moving more quickly. If you're reading slowly, it's like watching a movie in slow motion. Imagine watching a, a two-hour movie and it takes six hours. Um, that's going to be pretty boring. So that's one reason why reading quickly is more enjoyable. Another uh, maybe counterintuitive idea is that reading quickly is more easy and reading slowly is more difficult. This sounds a bit strange, but if you think about it, if you're reading slowly, the reason you're reading slowly is because you're thinking about the grammar. You're maybe trying to translate words into Japanese. And grammar is difficult. Translating is difficult. Grammar's pretty boring. So if you are reading slowly, you're actually thinking much harder. So you're going to get more tired. If you're reading more quickly, you're thinking less about difficult things like grammar and translation. And you're thinking more about the story. So when reading quickly, you'll enjoy more. 
If you enjoy reading more, you're likely to read more because we do things that we enjoy. And if you read more, you'll get better at reading and getting better at reading, you'll be able to understand more easily. So this is a, this is a virtuous cycle. This gets better and better. And the important key to this is, um, is reading easy books. It's very important to read easy books. One question, whether it's an easy book, is, uh, is to think about whether you translate as you're reading. Um, and you can give yourself a score uh, as you read a book. Um, if you never translate, give yourself five points. If you translate one or two words, that's four points. Um, if you translate one or two words per paragraph, that's uh, maybe three points. One or two words per sentence, that's two points. If you're translating every word, that's one point. So you can give yourself a score from one to five. Uh, you can also think about the book that you've just read um, and think about these questions. Was it easy to read? Uh, give yourself five points if it was very easy, one point if it was very difficult. Uh, did you read quickly? If you read very quickly, that's um, five points. Very slowly, one point. And did you understand everything? If you understand everything, that's five points. If you understand nothing, one point. Um, so you can look at your scores uh, for these questions and um, ideally you should be scoring for any book that you're reading, you should be scoring four or five for each of these questions. If you're scoring three or less for anything, uh, then there's a good chance that an easier book will be better. An easier book, you'll read more easily, more quickly, and you'll end up reading more. Um, reading easy books will improve your English much faster than reading difficult books. Um, so, good luck with the easy books. Good luck finding easy books. Um, and um, let's think then, let's just think about your reading targets. So um, just think about what level you're reading now. Think about how fast you're reading now. And what's your target speed? So how fast do you want to read? And how much are you going to read? What's your target for the amount of reading? And um, what's your target level? What level do you want to get to? Just uh, please think about your targets. Um, think about your targets. And while you're thinking about your targets, let's just think about good targets. Now, targets are very important, but not all targets are good targets. Uh, a good target must be possible to reach. If it's impossible to reach the target, it's not going to help you. Uh, but they shouldn't be too easy. If a target is too easy, then you don't need to do anything to reach it. So you're not going to try, you're not going to do the reading, you're not going to do the work. Um, and a good target also needs to be clearly defined. So you need to know at the end of the day, did I reach my target? Did I achieve this? Did I do this or not? So here are some targets to think about. Um, what do you think? Are these good targets or bad targets? Um, 200 words per minute by the end of December, a bit faster, two books every week, understand perfectly, a million words next week, lots of difficult books. Uh, please have a think about these. Are these good targets, bad targets? What do you think? Let's read this book. It's really difficult. Good targets are possible to reach. They are not too easy and they're clearly defined. Uh, some of these then are bad targets. For example, um, a bit faster is vague. We don't know what a bit means. Is it one word per minute faster? Is it twice as fast? No idea. Um, understand perfectly. This is not necessary. You don't need to understand perfectly if you're reading a story. You just need to understand the story and follow it and enjoy yourself. Um, it's also 
probably not possible to understand perfectly and it's not possible to know if you are understanding something perfectly. So this is not really a very good target at all. Um, how about a million words next week? Uh, this is probably going to take you about 15 hours of reading per day. So it's not really very practical. Um, lots of difficult books. Uh, this is also not a very good target. Um, for, for a start, it's vague. What does lots, how many is a lot? Is, uh, is one a lot? Uh, I would probably say that one difficult book is a lot. Probably too many. Um, and so this is a bad idea as well as being vague. You need to read easy books. You need to read lots of easy books. Uh, how many? Um, what do you think? Well, so please think about your, think about targets. Um, here are three targets then. Uh, what's your target reading speed? Uh, how many words are you going to read this semester? What's your target reading amount in the number of words? And um, what's your target level? So what level do you want to read at? Um, here are three targets. Um, and in fact, really, only two of these are important. You only need to worry about two of these targets. One of these targets is not so important. Uh, which one? Which one do you think is not important? Uh, don't worry about your target level. If you're reading, uh, remember the um, remember the virtuous um, cycle of reading. If you understand easily, you're going to read quickly. If you read quickly, you'll enjoy reading. If you enjoy reading, you'll read more. If you read more, you'll read better. Uh, right now, it's important to, to read easy books so that you can increase your reading speed. So if you set your target of reading level, uh, you're going to maybe read books that are too difficult. It's much more helpful to set a target for your reading speed and for the amount that you read. And if you do read faster and if you do read a lot, your level will go up and you will be able to read easier. You will be able to read more difficult books as you get faster. Um, what's your target reading speed? There's, there are two targets that you need to think about. What's your target reading speed? And we need a, um, we need a clearly defined goal. So we need to know how fast in um, a number that we can measure and we need to know when. So please, sometime next month, set yourself a date next month and um, set yourself a speed as a target. Um, and how many words are you going to read this semester? What's your target for the number of words you're going to read? Um, and think about, don't think about the level that you want to read. Don't think about your target level. Think about the level that you should read now. What is your level? What's the best level for you to read at? What can you read at comfortably and easily? Uh, so think about these questions. Um, so how much do you have to read then? Um, 100,000 words. There are a few different thresholds for reading. Um, 100,000 words is the number of words you need to read to uh, stop translating in your head. Uh, when you start read, when you start to read a foreign language, um, it's very natural to translate. Um, your Japanese is very, very good, is, is very, very, very good, much better than your English. So if you come to an English word, um, you can translate into Japanese and it's much easier for your, to bra your brain to handle in Japanese. It's very natural. It's also very unhelpful because translating is difficult. Translating uses lots of brain power and that brain power needs to think about the story and enjoy the story and be working in the background to try and get used to the language. Um, so to do this, you need to, to read about 100,000 words, and then you're starting to actually read in English. If you read, um, reading will help your test results. Reading will get you better scores in tests, um, but not just reading one book. Um, it's like doing sit-ups. Um, doing sit-ups will 
keep your body in good shape. Um, I, I started doing sit-ups, starting to get a bit fat. So I did 50 sit-ups and it made no difference. What I realized is you need to do 50 sit-ups every day. And it's kind of the same with reading. If you read regularly, if you read every day or at least a few times a week, then your English will get better. And after something like 300,000 words, your test scores will get better just from reading. If you have a test next week, then reading a book is probably a waste of time. You should go and practice doing the test. If you've got a test next year, or if you've got a test in two or three years, then if you start reading, um, reading books is probably more interesting than doing test questions. Uh, so that's that's what you need. Um, a million words is what a native speaker reads in one year. So um, for you, a million words is a lot. For a native speaker, a million words is, a, is that's a year of reading. Um, and it's not a million is, is a big number. Um, but again, if you look at your look at your reading speed. Um, and you can work out how much how much do I need to read? How many minutes do I need to read a million words? And um, how many hours a day or how many hours a week? How many minutes a day does that mean? And you'll be surprised. Um, it's not all you don't have to read all day every day. Um, two million words. Uh, somebody has estimated that going to study abroad for a year. Studying abroad is a great way to improve your your language. Somebody's estimated that if you read two million words, then that's the, that gives you the same benefit to your language as going and studying abroad for a year. Um, of course, um, if you have a chance to study abroad, I would recommend go and study abroad. Um, but uh, reading books, if you can get books from the library, is a lot cheaper. So in the first semester, I would hope you will read at least a hundred thousand words. Um, you can you can work out how many minutes per week you need to read, and um, go off and get reading. And um, your target speed then think about how fast you want to read, when do you want to read? Um, please make a note of your target. What's your target for next month? Um, write down a speed, write down a date, and get reading, and get your speed up, and get your number of words up. Good luck.